Mm -mm. Welcome pioneers to our newest edition of See You in the Workplace. I'm Zachary Staszewski with the Alumni Office and we're here visiting notable alumni, talking about their time at Carroll and how they ended up in their careers of today. <laughs> I'm here with Lindsay Slater, class of 2008, meteorologist with Channel 12 here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And over to you, Lindsay. <laughs> Initially, what got you interested in weather and how did your Carol journey get you to where you are today? It's a big question. Yes, it is. <laughs> Um, well, basically when I was a kid, uh, I just always thought it was really fun to go outside and take pictures of storms. I just thought it was so cool to watch how the atmosphere can change like on a dime. Okay. I just thought it was neat and I had to figure out like how that okay. even happens. Uh, so I actually went to college first to be a vet. And I got about a year and a half into that degree and I felt lost. I felt like I wasn't enjoying it as much as I wanted to. Then at the time was talking to my boyfriend, who's my husband now, and he brought up the fact that I always loved weather. Why don't I maybe kind of steer in that direction. But there wasn't anything at Eau Claire for that. Right. So, but then I ended up transferring to Carroll and became an environmental science major and I was so much happier. Can you talk a little bit about areas of your program that you really credit to your success today? Well, I think one of the biggest things was being paired with my advisor, Dr. Block. The work I wanted to do was very earth science based, meteorological based. He's the one that encouraged me to get an internship, period. And then that's how I found out this is what I want to do. He was like, having this background is going to help you stand out from other meteorologists that maybe just have a meteorology degree. Having an environmental science background as my first degree, sure. I think it just makes me a little bit more knowledgeable when it comes to aspects on the ground level. I'm better at when we have an event where there's a ton of rain, how are the sewers gonna be impacted? Or, you know, I took a whole class about like soil texture and how that affects flooding. And so and that's all very important because it still impacts people's daily lives. Right. You have the rain falling, but then at the ground level, things are happening. Uh, so Channel 12 was your first internship? It was my first internship. Out of Carroll, correct? Out of Carroll. Uh, well, not even out of Carroll, okay. while I was in Carroll. I thought I'll just naturally just work my way up. I'll stay in Wisconsin. It'd be super fun. And that did not happen. No, it did not, no. Because I mean, everybody Everybody starts with zero experience. Correct. Everybody does. So naturally, you always will start in a smaller market. You're not just going to start your first job in something like this. The markets are numbered like one to like 209. One is New York. That is the number one market. My first job was actually in Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. And that was market 90. So I was pretty okay. happy to start in a medium sized market. But literally, I, I graduated Carol in May of 08, got married in August, got that first job in Jackson the end of December. Wow. It was like bam, bam, bam. That was our home for three and a half years. It was crazy. So in this work, you've <laughs> you've had to take a lot of risk. This is the kind of industry that you have to move. You have to go somewhere to get work your way up. Yep. You're not just going to start in your hometown and stay there the rest of your life. You have to have those moments where things just go wrong. I was in the middle of a full forecast and one of the janitors just walked right in front of me with his broom. <laughs> But three times. Yeah, that's the best part of the whole story. Three it's times. like one time you're just like, oh, oh no, shoot. yeah, oh, shoot. But no. then he walks back, and then he walks back again. And I don't even think he cleaned anything. I think it was just a dry mop. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I, I don't think that there was contact between the green no. and the brown. No, and he had a green fun. hat. Now, do you see like? In person, you don't look shiny, but on camera, oh, that's oh. why we have to wear <laughs> so much makeup so that when I stand here, it looks like I have cheekbones and my makeup in person with you yeah. probably looks like I'm a huge clown, well, but on I television, it doesn't look- I enough time in that makeup room. I didn't give myself enough cheekbone. And then I can actually see, okay, I didn't do a really good job with the back of this, so I can make sure that it looks all right. Uh -huh. Do you want to give it a go? So this is actually the radar that we're looking at right now. We're looking at a bunch of thunderstorms moving its way through Chicago. Lots of lightning, lots of rain. Uh, it's going to be dumping over here along the lake front and then moving its way out over the lake. That's good. Yes. That's just about 20 seconds. You got another three and a half minutes to fill. Three and a half minutes? I honestly was surprised with the size of the studio. Um, I think it's a lot smaller than people think. Mm -hmm. um, everything is right next to it. Oh yeah. Something else, but you would, you would never, never know. know with how the cameras are positioned. Right, exactly. And that's why there's three of them, because we can use angles to our advantage. When you're first starting, you get very scared and you want to just stay in the same spot. You don't want to move, you're afraid. And sure. then the 80-20 rule of looking at your graphics 20% of the time, but looking at the person. So if I'm talking about something really serious, like if we have a severe, like we have a severe thunderstorm warning, like I'm looking at you and I'm talking to you. Yeah. 
So then you can engage with them versus Deborah, all of this. Deborah, lock those shutters. Girl, De things are gonna be blowing through your windows. Everything that you see on television, we are making ourselves. We Which don't was just really pull surprising that. to me. Um, but basically, the way I forecast is I have my little forecast sheet. Um, I write down notes about like graphics I want to use, um, or as I'm forecasting, you know, we have our warm front coming through. So I'm like, okay, I want to make sure I have a graphic that highlights, you know, what that looks like or something. Right. Um, and as I look at all of these things, I basically look at all this data and then I X out. So I know I didn't miss something. If something gets messed up on the weather segment, it's the meteorologist's fault. It's not my producer's fault who's writing the news. They don't write anything for me. It's all ad lib. So if something goes wrong, it's usually my fault. <laughs> so uh, when we have something to talk about, like today we have this big low coming through and I've been monitoring it all day long. So I mean, you know, it's something that I can tell my story with better. When there's nothing to really talk about, it's hard to fill that time. We're given three and a half minutes to speak and I gotta fill it with something. <laughs> Writing is not my strong suit. Right. Talking is my strong suit. What got me better and better at doing meteorology on camera is just doing it. So you recently were the keynote speaker mm -hmm. at a leadership luncheon yeah. uh, at the Graduate Center for Carroll University. What was your message at that event? Well, Carroll was such a big part of my life. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Carroll. That, and I didn't, that had never crossed my mind before. I'm like, you know, I, I, I have this journey of, you know, this school and then Carol and then my internships and then my other two jobs. But if I never would have made that integral switch, I wouldn't be here. And it, it just hit me at that moment. Yeah. And I was like, I got so overwhelmed. And I was just like, wow, this, this school has done a lot more for me than I realized. Because you went on to get uh, a degree in meteorology. I did, yeah. Meteoro meteorological. Meteorology? Meteor or meteorological sciences? Meteorology. Sure. That one. <laughs> Wait, how do you say it? Meteorological. Meteorological. There you go. Meteorological. <laughs> now, can you spell that? Um. <laughs>